Welcome everybody. My name is Paweł Strzałkowski. I'm, uh, I'm a software engineer at Visuality. Today I'm going to tell you about fuzzy text search, how to find a phrase in text when you don't really know what you are looking for. A bit of description. Our client has given, that, uh, has given us a task in the past. We were supposed to make job offers a bit more anonymous. So we were supposed to take job offers and their descriptions and within those descriptions replace company names with an ambiguous the company. Well, sounds like a simple task. We just take job offer description. We take company name that posted the job offer. We apply, apply a bit of Ruby magic and we are done, right? Well, if it was that simple, I would just thank you for your attention right away and finish the presentation. However, eh, not so much. The job offer descriptions are handmade, so they contain errors, misspells. Also, the company names mentioned in those descriptions are used in different forms, may contain additional punctuation, may contain for example, a conjunction between the parts of the company name. So, what to do now? Here comes fuzzy text comparison. Fuzzy is something that's, well, difficult to perceive clearly, something vague, something not really easy to explain. With that word, fuzzy text comparison doesn't answer whether two phrases match exactly. It defines the similarity of two phrases. There are, there are different fuzzy text comparison measures, one of which that we used is Jarro Winkler similarity level. Let me explain you a bit how it works. If you take two phrases, two text phrases, and apply Jarro Winkler's similarity on them, if you get the result of one, it means those are equal, exactly equal. If you get the result of zero, they are completely different. If you get something in between, well, that means some level of similarity or difference. Let me show you an example. I've used a fuzzy string match gem, uh, which is a library that allows you to use Jarrow Winkler's similarity measure. I created a very simple uh, wrapper function called it similar, uh, fuzzy similarity. It takes two phrases and gives you the Jarrow Winkler similarity measure. So I compared lorem ipsum doem with the letter A. Well, those are completely different, so I got zero. I compared lorem ipsum doem and visuality test. Well, those are kind of similar. Well, at least it's not zero. And when I compared visuality with, well, visuality, I got one. But it still doesn't answer how to find phrases in a longer text. We just know that we can, can compare two phrases. So let's go ahead. Uh, I figured, well, if there is a library for comparing two strings or phrases, there perhaps is a li library to finding a phrase in a text, but in those terms. Well, not so much. Uh, some best practice? Well, not for this case. At least I didn't find any that would be useful. So. Let's go with a custom solution. Before we jump in into the actual algorithm, I have to describe two assumptions that I've made. Uh, you've already seen that we are comparing two phrases and we are not really checking if those are equal. They, we are just checking how similar they are. But how similar should be considered equal? Is it a sim similar, similarity level of 07? Or, or eight, or nine, or something higher, we don't know. We have to assume something and tweak later on. Uh, when we end up, ended up with this algorithm, it uh, ended up being 09. Uh, and we will use this assumption and this result for the sake of this presentation. So whenever it is said that phrases are equal in fuzzy matching context, it means that their Jarrow Winkler similarity is more than 09. So this was assumption one. And now the second one. Assume that you're looking for a phrase. 
but the phrase that you are looking for and you want to replace might be shorter or longer. If you have two words in your phrase, the, the one that you are searching for might include a conjunction between them. So the phrase that you are looking for might be shorter or longer. Well, how much longer? After reviewing some of the job descriptions that we were supposed to work on, again, another assumption comes. We decided that the searched phrase might, might be two words longer. And this is what we will be using for using. So uh, the two assumptions, just a quick summary. Phrases are equal if their similarity level is more than 09, and matching phrase might be up to two words longer than the third one. OK, so let's make an exercise. We have an assignment. Take a story, find the name Mary Joan in it, and replace it with ambiguous the girl. We'll start this exercise, well, and finish with the story title. We won't go into the content. So the title is Mary as Jane of House Visuality. Well, there is already a problem. Somebody has taken a wrong Mary and even used an additional middle initial. But the task remains the same. So we have to take the title Mary as Jane of House Visuality and find Mary Joan or something similar. The algorithm has only two steps, so it will be quick to explain. The first step is break into pieces. Take your text and break into every kind of piece that you can, uh, that you can imagine, from length 1 to length of maximal phrase length, which we assumed to be two words longer than the actual search frame, phrase, Mary Joan. So we break this title into pieces of 1, 2, 3, and 4, every possible piece. And we start checking each piece one by one. We compare it with Mary Joan. Here are some results. If, if we compare Mary Joan to Of House Visuality, it's not that similar. If we compare it with Mary S, well, it's a bit more, but it's not similar enough, as we assumed. If we compare it to Mary S. Jane of, it's similar enough. And if we compare Mary S. Jane, it's yet similar enough. You might imagine that you, from a longer text, you can get many, many, many similar results. What to do with them? Let's take this Mary S. Jane of. As you probably remember, we assumed that the searched phrase might be longer than the initial phrase. So if we take this Mary S. Jane of, we, may, we might want to think whether this phrase isn't too long for us. So we take this Mary S. Jane off, we check its uh, similarity level, and then we try to chop off a word on the right and the word, and the word on the far left, checking the similarity levels of the uh, phrases that we got. So if we chop off, then we get Mary S. Jane, and its similarity level is higher. So we know quite for sure that this phrase, Mary S. Jane of, is less similar than, than Mary S. Jane, and we can forget about it. Later on, we try to chop off the left and the right word from S. Mary S. Jane and try further, but those phrases are not similar enough for our uh, algorithm. We also forget about S. Jane of. This way, when we apply our algorithm of Mary S. Jane of house visuality, we quite simply, and we look for Mary, Mary Joan, quite simply we just get Mary S. Jane. And now we can replace Mary S. Jane with, for example, the girl. So we succeeded. A few tips when you consider an algorithm similar to this. When you compare two phrases in the fuzzy terms, skip all the characters that, that make the fuzzy comparison blurry. So if your search may not care about things like punctuation, size of, sizes of the, of the characters, white characters, taxon genitives, and uh, some common words, just skip them, remove them from the comparison between two phrases. Uh, the other thing is compare only once. It's, uh, comparison between two phrases is a mathematical operation which is uh, resource heavy uh, in the long run. So if you have a long text, 
the comparisons between phrases, uh, they, they happen multiple times. So it might be the case that you compare two phrases multiple times, so cache the results for, for the sake of the, of the algorithm. Uh, it won't take too much memory, but it would speed up the, uh, the performance. And in general, cache the results. If uh, the output of the algorithm is some like your end, API endpoint result, don't run it every time. Just cache the results one way or the other. Just save in the database or create, use, use memcache, whatever, just cache the results. And probably the most important thing out of all these tips, test-driven development. If you get an assignment like this, define your goals. Because otherwise, you can tweak your algorithm for a year and not be sure where you got. If you define your goals, for example, create examples uh, of what text should be uh, translated to what, then if you have your examples, your test uh, scenarios, you can just uh, work your way through to achieve those results. And you have a clear set goal. OK, so we went through an example. There is only one problem with that, at least one. English is too easy. English is easy because the words in English don't, comes, don't come in different forms. So, you, so it's quite uh, easy to find the matching phrases. However, there is at least one language I can think of that it's a bit more difficult. Let's use Polish. I've taken a piece of text out of, out of uh, Wikipedia about Captain America. I even extended it a bit to make it a bit more difficult. Uh, so Captain America, in Polish, Captain America. Uh, here is a quick example, uh, well, a uh, short description that it isn't so original character. There was one similar before that. So let's apply our algorithm. It was looking for Captain America and found such occurrences like Kapitanie z Ameryki, Kapitan Ameryka, Kapitana Ameryki, and other Kapitan related phrases. So as you can see on a bit longer text, a bit more difficult, and uh, well, in a different language, the algorithm still works. Thank you very much. Perhaps you have some questions. Do you notice the like, mechanism of the algorithm itself? Like, let's say it's measure the length of text, the placement of letters, the amount of specific letters, or something like that? Uh, mm, the algorithm, what it does, the measure, what it does, it checks, uh, it's called uh, edit distance, uh, and it's measuring how, much, how many operations does it take to convert one phrase to another one. So it's a very mathematical operation, mm, well defined in Wikipedia. But, uh, so it chooses the shortest one, yeah? let's say, and then choose the and then set the like the result, yeah? but because there there might be many ways to like modify specific for the string, for example, yeah. So uh, the I cannot go to get to the details. There there is a lot of I believe matrix operations trying because uh -huh. and it's. It's not only about the length, it's about similarity of letters it's, uh, themselves. Uh, so I have to refer you to Wikipedia to get the details. It's quite interesting, but it's very mathematical, whereas the uh, implementation itself was more, well, engineering. So uh, I, I cannot tell about the details themselves, but uh, yeah, it's how to get from one word to the other. The, the more operation it takes, the less similar the uh, phrases are. Yeah, because I mean, let's say there are two row words like no and on, mm -hmm. <laughs> let's say, and they are like, let's say, um, the one, like, one side, they are pretty similar, but mm -hmm. com they are completely different, yeah? yeah? For example, I would be interested how this algorithm would work in such, for, let's say, Let's try. Yeah? Let's try afterward, afterwards. Yeah, yeah, okay. Good. I honestly don't know what, what's, the, what's the result, okay. but it should, be, it should be quite high. Fly, or you, when someone saves the job description, you also save the 
uh, we, we convert them uh, when we present them. However, only during the first presentation. They are cached. Uh, so they are cached for like 24 hours. I was just wondering about performance because well, the text can be pretty huge and I don't know how expensive such operations, especially because there are written words or mm -hmm. mathematics things regarding the strings comparison. Uh, we serve 30 job descriptions at once, at most, and the output generation isn't longer than 200 milliseconds or 300 milliseconds, uh, and the, the, the initial one. Uh, so, well, they are not that huge. They are like perhaps three or four paragraphs of text, up to let's say six. Mm -hmm. So those aren't like five pages of text, but uh, the performance is enough to uh, to do it on on the fly, at least for the first uh, for the first presentation. Is Ruby performant enough? Uh, it is. It's a, it's a bunch of uh, string operations, so as much as possible in, in C. Uh, I, have, I haven't noticed a performance issue with this. So it's pure Ruby, right? Yes. Well, it would be interesting also with the TDD because I have mm -hmm. a better idea of most things we were discussing about. Mm -hmm. Is uh, monitoring on the production. So if you could also have a screen that would uh, show the real things not pre-coded by you, mm -hmm. uh, that will also help for your tweaking. So you could tweak and see if the algorithm was like that, how many of them were mm -hmm. uh, successful. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, the, most, the more test data we can get, the, the better so for the algorithm. Actually, the production data is the test data also. Generate a yeah, the, the test that we wrote was in, were in fact uh, production level uh, pieces of text. So we were testing on that, but of course the more, more test data, more training data, more training data, the better. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>